How would you think of that, Chris? That that's was amazing. awesome. We now are what wait, wait, what? We now have an intro, like intro music and video cuts and yeah, I did the outro first there on us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <You're> like, <"Kurt." laughs> man, that is cool. That is awesome. Well done. Like, yeah, so we're, t- we're just, we, you know, we hired another videographer. Um, you know, we're trying to take everything to the next level. We're going to be building out more videos, more content, trying to put some polish on everything. Um, you know, I know that the, the listeners uh, uh, through the podcast typically get like an intro and outro but not the people uh, watching the videos. And, you know, what would even be cool, Chris, too, right, is we can do, uh, so the, So the title of this article today is 12 Reasons Why Business Absolutely Needs SEO by Sam Hollingsworth. Um, yep. and, and really, we could break each one, right, into a different uh, section on and YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can click, like, little chapters. You know what I mean? Um, and then we can put a, you know, a little tag on, I forget, that's not called a tag, but put a, put a little card that, yeah. yeah, put a little card that pushes it uh, to other podcasts that are familiar with this topic. And we're looking at building out, um, uh, you know, like people have called, like people have messaged us and called in and like, Hey, I want, I, I want to learn SEO or I want to learn something about digital marketing and putting together kind of, if you watch these podcasts in this order, it'll give you a good understanding. I know we've uh, kind of uh, put on the back burner talking about, um, you know, building some video courses, but I think that that's starting to come back on the table. So yeah. yeah. Getting, getting things set up and organized and ready. Well, uh, uh, welcome to another fun filled edition of the podcast. We're excited that you're here. We really are. Matt and I are broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and we are your result. Results. Results. <laughs> um, like Matt mentioned, we're jumping into this article, 12 Reasons Why Your Business Absolutely Needs SEO. Uh, in case you didn't know that it absolutely needed SEO, we're going to give you 12. You know, I, I, I believe that not all businesses think that they need SEO. I I, uh, I think you're right. I think they don't under and it's it's a little hard to understand, right? Because you think about whoever owns the business, whoever's in charge of marketing, whoever's doing whatever in these businesses that are not that keen on SEO, you know they search for stuff, right? They you know that they experience the internet the way everyone else experiences the internet. And then there's something where they're just not going, hey, how do I I got the paid ad. I got my team doing a really good job and we show up on as many of the paid ads as possible. Um, but I don't really care about this. Like I don't, it's well, weird. Well, I, I, I think people think of, uh, in terms of media buys, right? Yeah. Like, so, Hey, I got to run this commercial or I'm going to run this Facebook ad, or I'm going to do this. And they don't think about SEOs like omnipresent, right. Yeah. And it's like in the background on what every, everybody's doing, like, SEO makes everything better if they hear a radio ad and then they search for you, right? Or whatever it is, like SEO supports all media channels. And I think that not everybody looks at it that way. And also um, business owners that uh, haven't grown their business through the internet uh, have a different viewpoint of uh, how SEO, what SEO is, how it impacts the business. So I think that there's... um, some good education uh, that could be offered of, you know, why you need SEO. If if, uh, only there was a a podcast where you could figure out why you need S wait, that's this podcast. Good good (laughs) point, Chris. Good point. (laughs) All right. Uh, We do have a review. Um, I'm it's pretty awesome. It says hands down number one, best internet marketing podcast. I'm a young Digital marketer tuning my uh, turning my own agency tuning excuse me my own agency in Scottsdale Arizona. It was great meeting the team in Houston Texas. Anyone looking for relevant internet marketing strategies and reinforcement tips? This podcast is for you. Patif Secret Service number two. Uh, all right, let's jump in and talk about the 12. Well, really, actually, in this podcast, we're only going to talk about six of the 12 reasons your business absolutely needs SEO. Patif to Sam Hollingsworth, 
Uh, we really appreciate you breaking this article down or we're breaking the article down. We appreciate you writing the article and we're breaking it down. So the number one reason that he has or listed as number one, I don't know if this is an order of importance. Organic search is most often the primary source of website traffic. So if you look at uh, at, at Google Analytics for most websites, what you're going to notice is that most of the traffic is coming from organic. That in and of itself, that should be enough. Like I need to do a better job. How do I increase that number? How do I optimize that number? And that should be enough uh, to help you. Organic search is a huge part of most businesses' website performance, as well as a critical component of the buyer funnel and ultimately getting users to complete a conversion or an engagement. Well, you know, my, my thoughts on this is it's just so funny um, when I'm talking to clients and we're breaking down analytics and, um, you know, they're looking at uh, different channels that they're spending on. And then the number one channel always is organic. Yeah. Right. So there might be other things that generate that demand, but the harvesting of that demand is coming through Google. And that's not an area that everyone's always focused on. And that should be your primary focus if that's your primary source of conversions and people finding you uh, online. So, yeah, 100 percent. All right. So number two is SEO builds trust and credibility. Uh, I, I used to have a stat that I would talk about regularly that the presence of a PPC click and also being an organic, the presence of that PPC increased your organic click through. And it was attributable. The argument was that it was for uh, the reason was because of credibility, right? Having seen the brand once before, you're in the organic and you've got more credibility. You and I know so many people who just skip the paid ads. Like they're just, you know, they're buying them. That doesn't mean credibility, that means budget. And so we skip the paid ads and we go directly to the organic. Organic speaks to most people uh, on, a, on a level of credibility that paid can never do. Well, I think uh, people are, are kind of projecting the trust that Google comes up with, right? They trust that Google is gonna give them the best result and people aren't paying to, to, to be at the top of the search engine. So, you know, Google's looking at different ways to integrate and that's where they make uh, all their money, right? Um, yeah. Is through ads. Uh, but a lot of people know that too, right? And so a lot of people skip the ads. There's not a lot of people that click on ads and uh, look at organic. Like there's certainly a section of that, but there's ad people that click on ads and then there's people that, um, or click on whatever. And then there's people that click just on organic and you know based on where they rank it i mean it it projects trust right it projects credibility because they know that google's spending a lot of money on this algorithm to give them the best results and there's certain factors that are playing into that that google put that at the top of the search results so therefore i trust them in yeah. inherent credibility there's a number of things that you're going to do to work on this trust and credibility all right quality backlink profile, positive user behavior, machine learning signals, optimize on-page elements and content. And, and one of the points that's that's made in this article that Sam makes is that that these things, those things that actually build trust and credibility. It's like, how, like when you meet a stranger, do you trust them wholeheartedly? No, it takes time, it takes process, it takes consistency. And those are the same types of things that you need from an SEO campaign that will help give you that trust and credibility. I mean, that machine learning, I know uh, we might be expounding upon that later, but machine learning is playing into this more and more and more. And really the Chrome plugin, right? That, that a lot of people, well, Chrome, just the browser that a lot of people are using, um, Google is taking all that data like Tesla, right? Every day that people drive, Tesla uploads that data. Every day, every minute, every click, Google's um, grabbing that information and seeing how people are interacting with this site versus that site, right? And what's happening online and the machine learning's really starting to decide uh, based on what they're trying to achieve as a good user experience, um, who should be ranked where? And they're moving things around, they're testing things, mobile, desktop, very different. Um, and, you know, all this data is being fed into like a machine learning algorithm 
that's being trained and it's getting better and better and better. And, and trust and credibility are two drivers of that. So I think that's incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Number three, good SEO also means a better user experience. I mean, it, it boils down to this. This, I think, was written actually before kind of Google's latest update that's really focused on UI. Uh, but to have good SEO really is to have a good user experience. So, yes, uh, the article's right. 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. Well, I mean, you got page speed, which is huge, right? If a website takes a couple seconds to load, sometimes you just click back, right? Also, Google's looking at, are you clicking back, right? And so is the navigation menu uh, easily to get around the website? Uh, dwell time, how long people are spending on each page? What are they doing on that page? Are they clicking through? Are they looking at other pages? Are they watching a video? How are they interacting with it? How long is it taking them to read them? How far down the page do they go? Like Google's looking at all this stuff and is trying to understand what you do uh, and then how uh, potential customers and visitors are interacting with your website to determine what, based on that search, who, who should show up most, right? And so um, that's providing a lot more weight to Google than it has in the past. And uh, everything's driven by customer experience. And yes, there's a new update this month, um, the Web Vitals update that's all about user experience. You know, and speed's going to be incredibly important to that. I think we're going to see, um, I think we're going to see a shakeout. I, I think um, a lot of highly optimized websites that um, are from the technical side of things that are very fast are, are going to rise to the top, you know, um, and because Google keeps weighting that more and more than some of the, the other tactics. Um, you need to have good on page. I mean, you, you got to do everything, right? And I don't think that there's really gaming Google. It's just helping Google understand uh, what your website's about, what that information is, providing that high quality content, delivering the customer what it needs in a convenient, fast way and to be able to navigate the site. So, you know, really like, you know, SEO is now like almost like all marketing. <laughs> <laughs> to a certain degree. Um, I was just thinking it's like branding, like, yeah, every, like I mean, every aspect of how your brand looks online. I mean, and speaks to the, again, focused on the customer, do that well with the understanding of what Google's thinking about and, and what the, uh, the understanding of what the algorithm can key in on in terms of customer experience. Like that's it. It goes back to as long as you're providing a good experience to the Google user, Google will shine favorably, uh, favorably upon you. Well, the, the last thing I can really say is like I haven't seen. Um, well, the reason a lot of agencies don't uh, really predominantly do SEO is because it's hard and yeah. there's a lot of different things that have to happen. Uh, it's a moving target. Um and there's so many different uh, specialties that you have to have to provide good SEO, right? And you have to pull them all together uh, to, to click off those 200, 250 different kind of signals that Google's looking at. Um, and that's difficult. And that's why it's really important to understand what that framework looks like, understand what SEO is, how it impacts it, and how valuable it is. I think um, people undervalue uh, uh, what SEO is, and it is starting to become all inclusive. And it's like your overall customer experience online and your branding and how people interact with your brand. You know, it's not just like traditional media um, where you put out a message, people can interact, right? And it adds a whole new level of complexity. Um, and it's all encompassing. And, and again, that's why our viewpoint and from what we've seen in the data over the years is SEO should be first <laughs> and yeah. then everything else, right? So yep. that's- Ab yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all right, so number four, again, 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. Local SEO means increased engagement, traffic and conversions. So local SEO uh, is a fundamental part of small and medium sized businesses success. Local SEO aims at optimizing your digital properties for a specific vicinity so people can find you quickly and easily, putting them one step closer to the transaction. Focus on specific towns, cities, regions, and even states. I know you're working on some, some really local campaigns for kind of larger brands. Uh, How does that speak to you? 
Well, um, you know, driving foot traffic is different than driving internet traffic. Um, and there, and you're trying to drive people, um, maybe in store or you're offering a local service in a particular service area. Um, and with SEO, um, being broad, now you focus on local and then regional words, uh, and then the national words, and you have to have that strong local presence, but from all digital marketing, right. Uh, to SEO, there's specific strategies and you have to treat every location like its own, um, as own campaign and try to kind of draw a circle around it of, uh, where you're trying to impact and you're going to get other additional benefits, but like we have 48 for one client, 48 different campaigns, right. For each location, right. We did a small test, uh, worked successfully. We're rolling it out to all 48 locations. Same thing goes if you have five locations. Same thing goes if you have one location um, and you're targeting different things and it's all about the intent. Um, you want people to search for you locally. You want people to be able to get a map easy to find you and for you to show up in the three pack. And though, and a lot of people don't know this, the, the three pack is actually a different search engine than universal search. They kind of, well, than regular Google search and they wrap it together. It has kind of similar uh, target points, but it's its whole separate uh, search engine, just like Bing's a different search engine, just like YouTube uh, is a different search engine. And so uh, you have different strategies to achieve that. Um, and, and we have a special service just for local to, to get uh, local businesses to rank. And that has a lot to do with uh, what is on your site and on page and locations, uh, through the GMB, through, uh, what you can do on different social media platforms. Um, you know, and engagement's big, right? Like if people are talking about you, people are going to your site, people are sharing about you. Um, and, and the last thing I'd say is, you know, Facebook and Google don't, didn't typically like each other. Right. And I think that they've kind of fell in love and come to some kind of arrangement, um, where, you know, uh, Instagram, um, you know, Facebook, they're starting to index that stuff and incorporate that uh, into their search algorithm in addition to other platforms. Um, and, and like people think about like Twitter, right? And, and, and why, why do those signals matter? Well, Twitter's like a small um, press release, <laughs> basically, right? You're like, this is what you're saying to the public as a business. So Google's looking at that, that's potentially important, right? Um, and so a lot of these platforms are changing. And again, the definition of SEO and what it's encompassing it is broadening. And so you got to kind of understand that. But I mean, you know, if you're an e-commerce company, you're a local company, like whatever your goals are, there's different things that you want to be doing to generate uh, a, a different impact and showing up differently in the search results. Um, and, and all those things should be considered on the strategy side. And that's really what I've seen mostly with a lot of campaigns recently is I'm not saying that the SEO is bad. Well, yeah, some of it is really bad. Um, but uh, what I'm really saying is there's no strategy really, right? Maybe they're ranking for their name or they're ranking for words that they don't want. Like there, there's not this consistent strategy that's pulled through. So whatever it is they're doing, it's just, you know, kind of the mouse with and melt trying to turn it into cheese. You know, there's no, there's no real um, concerted effort to achieve a specific goal. And just like any of your paid campaigns, your SEO campaign should have a goal. It shouldn't just be every month we're doing SEO, I'm spending money. And also certain campaigns and certain keywords. Um, I, I looked at a proposal from another company um, uh, the other day and, and I was just like, look, like, you know, I think, the company has it right, like of what they're trying to do. I think it's a good fit, but, but the reality is I'm not sure you need to be throwing that money away on SEO because I don't think you're doing enough to make an impact. And so you, you might want to spend that money elsewhere um, because it doesn't make sense for what you're trying to do. So again, SEO is an investment and it's got to make sense and it's got to go after the right keywords and focus on the right area. And I know that was a lot before, so I'll stop. 
<laughs> so that's number four. Local yeah. <laughs> SEO means increased engagement, traffic, and conversions. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so let's move on. Number five, SEO impacts the buying cycle. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't really find much to to to, to circle up and and add that Sam had put here. But but I I would say that the SEO goes to the credibility, right? So if you've got that credibility that we've discussed already, then yeah, more likely to buy. Also, it gets them in the funnel in the first place. I mean, if they can find you in organic and then they can click through to you, like that starts the buying process. So without that kind of SEO placement, then you are not going to have any impact on the buyer cycle. It's interesting. I had a couple of conversations about where SEO fits in the cycle. Is it top of the funnel? Is it mid of the funnel? Is it bottom of the funnel? Guess what? It's yeah. everywhere, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and, and it's, again, the campaign of how you're using it and the terms that you want to show up for. And again, that's why it's all encompassing, right? And, and it supports and is a multiplier or lift to anything else that you're doing. And so it's just so incredibly important. Um, you know, also, you know, you got to understand what's the buyer persona and you got to understand what the customer journey is and then where you're trying to get in the conversation and show up. Um, but there's a lot of data out there. And early on, you know, like when people are buying a TV or a car or tennis shoes, you'd see how the searches, right? Remember change from top level to comparison to specific brands to pricing, right? And, it, and it's all about that customer flow and where they're at in the buying cycle. And again, I love SEO because it, it achieves all those things. They're just different campaigns. So. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, from the perspective of covering the whole funnel, you think, you know, a question that ends at obviously the bottom of the funnel, which is, you know, buy Nike shoes now near me or something like that. Sure. Like, what are the best running shoes? Like yeah. those are the opposite ends of the funnel or why, why would I use running shoes instead of loafers? <laughs> Whatever it is like that <laughs> off of funnel people doing research down to uh, where do I buy Nike running shoes near me is, is, is that's the whole gamut. I mean, think of like car buying too, like similar kind of thought process. Yeah. Right? And, and there's a lot of different products that are that way. And, and I think it's really un important to understand what the buying cycle is based on the data that you know right now and then what are you overlaying from a marketing strategy uh to cover that right and then you know what is your brand story that that you know you want to communicate and so um again strategy super important right because every single keywords like almost like a different campaign um so it's almost like strategy is the seo of an seo campaign <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Work on it a little bit, but I, I think we're, there's, there. <laughs> there's, there's a, a general idea there. We're not, not sure how well that made sense. All right, number six, SEO best practices are always being updated. Now, I don't know that this fits into 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO. I think this goes into 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs ongoing SEO, right? So the point is, is, hey, maybe you did a bang up job. You did some SEO in the beginning. Maybe your niche wasn't that competitive in the beginning. So you actually didn't even have to do that much SEO, which is still true depending on your niche. Um, and then now if you're not monitoring it, if you're not keeping track of it, if you're not watching your rank and making sure that you're generating the sales and or leads that you used to before, then you're eventually you're just going to wake up and go, hey, I used to have a whole lot of leads coming in the door and now I don't have that many leads coming in the door. I probably should go look at my SEO and figure it out. And I would submit that's a, not a good strategy. So, yeah, very, very reactive. I mean, here's the thing, right? Anybody that starts a business, they start on whatever principles they know and they typically operate under those principles and grow that business. And that works for a lot of businesses. That certainly doesn't work for SEO because things are being updated, strategies are changing. I'll give you one example. Uh, meta keywords, okay? Meta keywords, um, you know, are on every site. Like, hey, put in your meta keywords. I can show you a lot of third-party resources that say, hey, Google considers it spam. Actually, maybe Google doesn't consider it all and Bing considers it spam, okay? Yeah. And so, um, I'm seeing a lot of sites like, okay, that was a strategy back in the day 
marketers overused it, tried to manipulate the search engines. Google saying, hey, that's not a ranking factor anymore. Also, yeah. the, the machine learning uh, uh, algorithm is getting smarter. Um, you know, that's not something we look at. Like, there's a lot of tactics in SEO, and like people still think a lot of those tactics um, work. Now, the algorithm hasn't completely changed, but it's evolved and it's gotten smarter. Um, and, and, and it's, it's moving away from a lot of those things. And so, um, you know, staying up to date, staying current, um, on top of things with SEO is going to impact you. And one of the big things that I've seen is if you're staying ahead of the curve on some of this stuff, uh, a lot of websites miss it right for a long time. And then they're reactive when they've dipped down so far, you know, I mean, you know, you, you're, you're ranked first for a keyword and you drop down to sixth. And then you're like, holy cow, what happened to all my revenue? And then you trace it back and, you know, it's your SEO, right? And then it's like, well, uh, other people have made changes or stayed on top of things and I haven't. And I'm telling you what this new update, this new kind of, uh, you know, web experience, web vitals update and speed, um, I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to see it big time. And so that's really what um, we've been preparing for this month and what we've been focusing on with our clients is uh, to make sure that that happens uh, properly. Um, and, you know, we're hiring more people. We just hired uh, a, another software engineer um, to do um, some things like basically uh, taking uh, PHP and then, you know, it security issues, it's slow rewriting as JavaScript. I mean, there, there's a lot of things. Uh, SEO is becoming a lot more technical. So, yeah. Um, and and more branding like it's just harder right so it's it's very as you said earlier uh, the, the reason a lot of organizations don't do seo uh, or don't do it well is because it's so complex to put together and it's about getting um the individual pieces which is hard enough now you got to get the individual pieces to work together Right. If you're in a niche market and it's not that competitive, probably any one of those individual pieces could add a lot of value and move the needle for you. But if you're in a competitive industry, you really got to have all of those valves fire, firing at the right time to drive that engine, um, you know, to the top. I mean, it's not just buying an ad and, and letting, you know, letting it run or, you know, like having the billboard up. There's a lot more that goes into it. Also, there's a lot more data you can see and make decisions um, and data science that goes into it. I mean, I would argue strongly, Chris, that SEO is much, much, much harder than the traditional mediums. Yes, and and more valuable. Well, of course, yeah. <laughs> but people, people haven't in their head like made that switch yet. Like, yeah. you know, I think it's the same thing with crypto. <laughs> People <laughs> have uh, understand that we the whole financial system is changing. All right. I thought we were going to get through this podcast without mentioning crypto. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, again, SEO best practices are always being updated. What's one really good way to make sure you're up to date? Uh, listen to this podcast. Hire us. Um you know, that's two great ways. Yeah, maybe you don't even need Do to a consulting session with us. <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't even need to, uh, to uh, stay up to date. You just hire us and then we stay up to date. That's our job. Uh, or if you're trying to stay up to date, uh, then just continue to check out this podcast. So that is point number six. Again, out of the 12 reasons why your business absolutely needs SEO uh, from Sam Hollingsworth. Patif to you, Sam. We're going to cut off right here and we'll be making a part two that you'll be checking out later. Uh, are there any announcements that you want to make? Um, no, no, I just really want to play this outro to see. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Before you don't get too excited. <laughs> One of the points that I remembered that I missed was there's in terms of local SEO, right? And this is actually goes to credibility. There should be a strong emphasis on user reviews on Google. Um, on Google and just in general, I would argue that video reviews can be some of the most powerful things you can do. Matt, would you happen to know a good way to get a secure a video review? I mean, I do. I'm just checking with you. Protestimony.com, pro tip, protestimonial.com. Pro tip yep. for you, go to protestimony.com. We developed this. 
in the middle of COVID when we couldn't send our videography crew to, to do sit down, uh, very cost effective. Uh, we believe, well, all our clients should be using it. Um, we're, we're working on generating a bunch for ourselves. Super valuable tool. Uh, easy. Like, I think the point is easy. Like, I think most people think, oh, video testimonial, daunting. Like, even if I don't have to send a crew and I've got to ask somebody to do it and take care of it themselves, this will never happen. The reality is it's so easy. You send a, a link, an email link, they click it. I know this because my other business, we use it and we're driving video reviews. You, They click a link either on their phone or on their computer and it doesn't even, you don't have to download anything. It just like puts you in the position where you're, where your client is recording that video real time right away. It gets submitted to you. There's tools in the background to make it even better. Like it's, it's just a phenomenal product. Protestimony.com. Check it out. I think there's a 14 day free trial. Uh, we, we believe in it. Uh, you know, uh, we want to get it out there. We think it will help. Um, I'm going to play the outro now. Wait, um, wait before you do. Oh. We are the number one SEO podcast in the known universe. That's thank you to you guys. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. My name is Matt Bertram. Bye-bye for now. Bye.